of the reasons you don't get bored on a boat is there always something to do. At the moment I'm stitching the um, covering onto the wheel but I'm very contented, very contented. About. Why have you got a big foam panel? What have you done? I'm just making our salty lass more of a home. And do you know what? A quick wash of the covers in the washing machine might well do the trick. Well, that's coming up a lot brighter, isn't it, Beverly? I can see the difference of colour. It looks a lot better for it. So these are the pro answer to my knife problem on board Salty Lass because in a recent storm we found out that knives would have been flying all over the boat if I used my knife block. So what I've gone for instead is these which come in their own sheath with a sharpener on the end of it. So as you use the knife it stays sharp but because it's sheathed it can be safely put in a drawer without cutting the fingers of anybody who reaches in to get it. And they weren't expensive knives, that's the best of it. So the knife has its own sheath which protects it and its own sharpener and it doesn't come out of the sheath. Mm. What you have to do is you have to lift it up and then it withdraws from the sheath. When you put it in, it now is locked and it's safe now to go in the drawer. It can be hard to admit you've made a mistake, but if you're a sailor you might have made the same mistake I did because I have made a bad mistake. I did not service the engine before I took the boat out. Now, you've seen a video of us servicing the diesel engine. You haven't seen a video of us servicing that engine. And the reason for that is you don't think about the rigging, you don't think about the mast. It's there, it's like the hull, it's like the seat I'm sitting on. It's just there, it comes with the boat. You don't think about it. But it needs servicing, just like the engine down below. The servicing is a lot simpler, but it has to be done. It has to be checked, and that's what we're going to do today. So to show you what caused this sudden concern, look at this. This is our furling line, which pulls the foresail in and out, and it runs through this roller. And this pin is the pivot. This pin here. And look at that. That pin is loose. It has nothing underneath holding it in place. We were lucky. This popped out and it landed here in the deck and rolled into the tow rail. It could have gone over the side. This line came loose. Now fortunately we have more of these which run up to the furling drum. But we decided after that to go and check them all and check the clips. So what we now have is some seizing wire which I will be putting on here to hold this in place. So in general, just get methodical. You work your way back from the front, you check everything, you check the split pins, you make sure that they're, st they're in still in there, make sure there's no cracks in the cleavers pins, no cracks on top of these. Check the swages themselves, look for cracks running down the swages and look for cracks that run around the swages. An interesting tip I've come across is to run your fingers down your standing rigging. And if you feel a lump anywhere within about 
six inches, 20 centimeters of the swage, then you probably have a cracked wire inside the rigging and it's going to go. Your number one enemy is the common shackle, this thing. As you can see, this one is not seized. There is nothing to stop this screw coming loose. This one's not seized. That one's not seized. Neither are either of those two. The base of the mast is a shackle fest. And none of them are seized. This pin that was at the bottom of the gooseneck bolt has some sort of little retaining rod through it, but nothing in it. So I've seized that one now. That little retaining pin will not move. That holds the sail boom on. If that ever came loose, you'd lose the sail. So, after a few minutes with some seizing wire, these shackles will not be coming loose again. Mm -hmm.